When I look at commercial drones, I'm excited by the technology as much as anybody else. I think it's neat, I think it's exciting. But like some security professionals, I look at that and I can also see the darker side of what the potential is of someone taking that technology and doing nefarious things with it. You go to any event where people are worried about terrorist attack, you've got a lot of police on the ground. But up in the air, it's wide open. We don't have defenses up in the air in three dimensions. So now that people can use drones to leapfrog over those defenses, we're having to think about how do you, how do you mitigate them, how do you deal with them. We're out here at Quantico Marine Corps Base. In particular, we're at the Urban Training Center. There's a lot of new technology that's coming out. So we're trying to get an assessment of where the counter technology is. How good is it at stopping this technology if someone wanted to use it for a bad purpose? MITRE has invited teams of inventors from around the world to wage a two-week battle between their drone attackers and the defending team's drone killing systems. Technologies range from radio frequency jamming to systems that hack drone controls to a net fired from a bazooka. With any technology like this, there are a thousand good ways to use it, and there's that one bad way. You don't ever want to have to face that bad way, but what we feel like we're doing here is helping to address that. The red team attackers from MITRE are positioned roughly a mile from the blue team defenders. Red team lead has observation lead loud and clear. Copy, thanks. In the military arena, a red team represents the bad guys. So our job is to try and think like people who are deliberately using these in a bad way to inflict harm. Really the idea of the red team is to provide the targets for the blue competitors to detect. The rules of the game, uh, stop all the drones. So imagine your competitor, you come out here and they don't know what drones are coming, where they're coming from, when, how many. We're going to tell them flight window is starting at a certain point. And then over the course of an hour, drones are going to be coming from different direction with increasing levels of difficulty. And they've got to detect them and report it to us. And they've got to intercept them and put them down safely. Some drones are remote controlled by pilots. Others by onboard computers that follow pre-programmed GPS paths through the air. Either way, they need to communicate so plugging their electronic ears can disable them. The Drone Buster, handheld RF jammer. It is very easy to use. You activate it on the back, point it at the drone, and pull the trigger. I hear it. Got him, Clay. He's going home. Turned back that fast? Yep, three seconds from when I got on target. Confirm we have returned to launch. So our system's not designed to knock something out of the sky. Our goal is to have it go back home so we can catch the perpetrator. Radio frequency, or RF, jammers are legal to experiment with. But GPS jamming is tightly restricted. Even on military bases, it's rarely allowed. Because of the FCC's control over the spectrum within the US, we can't test these things off of military installations. So we have to participate in these military evolutions in order to see how we're doing. The Drone Buster uses protocol manipulation to initiate what they call the return to home function of most hobby drones. Did you have any impact on the Phantom? No. We couldn't turn on GPS. And we would have crashed about $2,000, $3,000 <laughs> worth of drones. So we're still missing one Phantom. 